welcome in everybody. I have Sarah Ray with us today. <laughs> oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Sarah, I had to ask before we get started. You like going camping and outdoorsing and things like that, right? No. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. You're going to ruin it for me. The fucking headset is just <laughs> farting up oh. a storm. <laughs> God, yeah, you can probably hear it. I'm moving. Okay, I'll stop it moving. Okay. Do you have a uh, mic on your computer? Oh, I'm on my phone. You're on your phone? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, do you have the vibrate on? I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> I would know. <laughs> oh my goodness. Because it might be the phone vibrating that it's picking up, like you have messages coming in or something. Oh, no, it's not that. It's definitely the, the headphones. Okay. These are the good ones, too, so. <laughs> All right. Well, I won't mind it too much. So, today I actually do have a National Parks case for you. Oh, God. <laughs> but <laughs> before we get started... While we understand that some individuals listen for the entertainment aspect of true crime, it's important to remember that these are real people with families and friends who may still be suffering from their loss. These stories are not meant to open old wounds, cause further emotional damage to those involved. We remind you to please be respectful and do not dox or contact those involved with cases. The case discussed on this podcast today may be disturbing to some listeners and listener discretion is advised. I don't think I have any trigger warnings, which is a rarity considering all of my episodes have had trigger warnings so far. <laughs> okay. I guess it doesn't sound too scary so far. <laughs> I will say, though, that this is probably one of the more weird and interesting cases that I have dealt with in a while. But this case today has definitely got some weird twists and turns going to it that kind of baffle me but at the same time I'm like okay this is a missing persons case it's not completely out of the blue to have a bunch of different things going on that you can't line up because you don't know where the person's at but we'll get started so Sandra Johnson Hughes was born on July 26th of 1966 and was an avid outdoors woman according to her friends and family she was an experienced outdoor survivalist and actually had taken courses in college to become a state park ranger. In June of 2020, during the pandemic, Sandra moved from Maui, Hawaii to California, which I couldn't find out which area she moved to in California, but she did move to California to be back on the mainland during the unpredictable times. And she also decided that she was going to go to the Sierra National Forest for a solo camping trip to quarantine, believing and concerned that she may have come in contact with the coronavirus during her move from Hawaii. Okay, okay, hold up. She picked the Sierra Mountains. <laughs> I should I should laugh, but that's like, why would you pick those? Why? It's like everything from like the uh, UFOs to like the Donner Party. It's <laughs> what's the Donner Party? It's a weird up there? area. Yeah, yeah. Oh up my in Nevada. god. Yeah, that's where the Donner Party was. Dude, what? <laughs> I didn't know yeah. that. Yep. yep. Oh my god. I wouldn't goodness. quarantine there. So yeah. Yeah. No. Okay. That makes a little bit more sense now. <laughs> I didn't know that there were UFO this. sightings and stuff up there. I mean, it's just allegedly. There's some weird allegedly. stuff. Allegedly. That's like close to Area 51. And, Is it yeah. really that close to Area 51? Hold on. Yeah. I've yeah. been looking at this map all day. Have I just not pieced the two together because I've been so tired? Hold on. I'm happy that I can add to this. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> See, there is a so reason. Just, yeah. <laughs> Sitting here listening. I was ready to just sit and listen, but. Where is this? Oh, my God. Okay. Okay, I see you. All right. I know that there was some weird stuff happening in, like, Yosemite National Park, but I did not know about the Sierra Mountains, so. Yep. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
So she decided to go to the Sierra Mountains to quarantine because she believed that she may have come in contact with the coronavirus during her move from Hawaii. Ashley Makus, and I'm so sorry if I butchered that name, that's just what Google gave me, but described Sandra, her aunt, as being a person who liked to move around a lot. And she didn't have children from her previous two marriages, so she was free to travel and do what she wanted, but she was very organized about it. So on June 26th, Sandra spoke with her family on the phone discussing the solo camping trip and hike that she was planning, which would take her possibly up to the Yosemite National Park as she wanted to get away from all the craziness happening in the city and the world during this pandemic. Now, I remember a lot of people that just went, you know what, we're going into the woods. We'll see you whenever this blows over. I remember a lot of people doing that, and I can't blame her for doing that because I kind of just went, you know what, I'm just going to lock myself in my room and focus on my studies. I don't need to know what's going on outside. Where were those people? I didn't even think about that. (laughs) (laughs) So Sandra planned on camping and quarantining at the Johnson Meadows area in the Sierra National Forest between Basor Road and Minarets Road. This is an area where there are several other camping grounds around the location, as well as many areas to go sightseeing with rivers running through the meadows and the Sierra Mountains as the backdrop to beautiful valleys and flower beds. However, it is important to note that this is a higher elevation area and there are dangers of drastically changing weather conditions along with many of the areas looking flat upon like gazing out at them there are some spots where individuals can easily stumble fall get hurt and overall this wouldn't necessarily be your average or even an amateur camping spot but one for a more seasoned wilderness explorer okay i guess i guess she kind of sounds like she is seasoned yeah, a she's bit. she's very seasoned yeah. from what I was reading earlier today. She's very seasoned. She's got credentials. She's done this before. She's that type of person that like she doesn't necessarily need to go in with camping gear. She could make it on her own without it if she needed to. Okay. I mean, yeah, that doesn't like exempt her from like, you know, injury or like subcoming to the elements, whatever. Oh, absolutely. Time of year she went missing, but like still Like we were saying, Sandra is an avid and experienced outdoor woman and very independent as well. No one in particular was worried about her when she announced that she was making this trip in June of 2020. Now, unfortunately, we're going to get into some strange dates going on here. And depending on which source you go to, these dates do change. However, I'm going off of the initial post that was made by the Madera County Sheriff's Office in 2020, as I think these are the most accurate. Okay. So on July 2nd of 2020, hikers were traveling near Johnson Meadows when they found a tent and other camping gear abandoned and strewn about and promptly contacted the Madera County Sheriff's Office to report found property. Okay. Within this campsite, Items that were strewn about were things like folders containing documents such as birth certificates, social security card, and there was a full binder of contact information, which was actually how the authorities got in touch with Sandra's niece, Ashley. The sheriff's department notes that the abandoned campsite at Johnson Meadows was disheveled and relayed this to Sandra's family, to which Ashley was quoted saying she would never leave her campsite a mess Even a piece of litter on the ground would bother her. To which Ashley does further note in a Facebook post shared by the Madera County Sheriff's Office that Sandra's things had been thrown about all over, almost as if her car and her belongings had been emptied carelessly. This immediately starts to raise red flags to Sandra's family, and a missing persons report is filed with the Madera County Sheriff's Office that day. Days later, on July 4th of 2020, Sandra was reportedly seen near the Chiquito Pass trailhead, according to the Yosemite National Park officials. There was a car crash that multiple people witnessed that was near the abandoned campsite. After this crash, Sandra gets out of the car and multiple people start offering her help, but she declines help from anyone that is offering and other fellow motorists that pass her. 
Now, reportedly, she hung around the vehicle and was seen there for a while before walking off into the woods and basically vanishing. She was spotted two more times by hikers going through trails, and they did not know at the time that she was a missing person. And these sightings were later reported to authorities with hikers noting how she was barefoot and she had a bruise going across her face. Now, these groups did ask Sandra if she needed medical attention, but she declined at the time. Now, moving forward, and it's undisclosed which day this happened, but a couple of days after the sighting on the 4th, about 2.5 miles from where the accident scene had taken place and just inside the Yosemite National Park boundary lines, a sleeping bag matching a receipt from REI purchased by Sandra was found. On July 5th of 2020, a silver sab that belonged to Sandra was found high centered on a stump in a ravine near the Chiquito Creek trailhead. Having collided with a tree and based on the damage that was done to the vehicle, authorities believe that this was a low speed collision, meaning that she wasn't speeding or anything. However, somehow she did lose control of the vehicle. At the time, law enforcement allowed the vehicle to remain in place, hoping that the owner would return for supplies or to seek shelter in it. A note was written and attached by the Forest Service officials to Sandra's car saying, your family is worried about you. And to please contact the Merida County Sheriff's Department. Now, the search is on. Deputies and volunteers from Kern, Tulare, and Fresno County Sheriff's Offices assisted Madera County Sheriff's Office search and rescue, along with the search and rescue from Mariposa, Kings, Santa Clara, and Marin counties. The California National Guard Black Hawk helicopter was also deployed to aid in an aerial search for Sandra, while canines and their trainers assisted on ground. Sandra was spotted again on August 9th of 2020 when two hunters told officers that they had seen a woman leaning against a tree on road 5S01 near Basor Road, which is in the area of the Chiquito Creek and the Portuguese Overlook, which is about five miles from where her last known campsite was at. The two hunters didn't know that she was a missing person until returning from the forest and seeing one of her missing persons flyers. When the hunters called to report the sighting, they did note that Sandra did not attempt to wave them down or appear distressed in any way. However, she was visibly thinner than her last photos that were taken. These sightings reportedly took place close to areas that burned in the massive Creek fire, which began on Labor Day weekend of 2020 in Fresno and Madera, a fire which wasn't fully contained until December of 2021. Luckily, Sandra's vehicle was not burned in this fire, and the Madera County Sheriff's Office has since gone up and removed it from its location, which I'm presuming is to protect and maintain evidence that might still be in that vehicle. Now, massive searches took place for around a month after Sandra had vanished. And unfortunately, with the Creek Fire raging, it led to so many delays in this investigation and this search. And when winter began rearing its ugly head, it didn't help matters either. And unfortunately, with natural disasters, there comes new formation of nature. And with the creek fire burning up the area, there's possibilities for lost evidence along with the changing of the terrain itself. Sheriff Tyson Pogue is also quoted in saying that all the changes, the landscape, which is both good and bad. Bad in that you know you can push debris over things or cover up things that we're looking for. But also, if it was something under a bush or if there was something under a bush maybe it moves the bush out of the way and you can find that item that's been missing now search teams do continue to actively follow up on leads and review evidence regarding this case according to the madura county sheriff's office along with planned searches for summer to revisit some of these areas where evidence was collected Tyson does discuss how one of the hardest things in this case was the lack of clues that were found at the initial campsite. 
And according to a report done by Fox 26 News, clues that come forward regarding this investigation are still active. However, they're not being discussed or disclosed to the media at this time. Ashley does note that it's not like Sandra to disappear like this. She will always call or text when she comes into cell phone range. Ashley also notes in her post that law enforcement does not believe that Sandra is trying to evade them through their searches, but does believe that she may be in a disassociative state and unable to recognize that she needs help. And this was an update made back in 2020, which was three years ago, so I'm not entirely sure how that plays up to today. And if she is in a dis disassociative state, it's obvious that she's not thinking clearly and there's some mental health issues going on there. Oh. Now, authorities did note in 2021 that they had no evidence to suggest that Sandra had suffered any serious injuries or anything worse, which I'm presuming they're basically kind of saying we don't suspect foul play at this time. Now, there was a really weird sighting in 2021 as well. And I gotta mind you to take this with a grain of salt and some skepticism as much as I do believe in the paranormal. What started out as a simple family outing turned into a spooky experience. Jake and Victoria Gorba had traveled on July 21st of 2021 to the Madura County Mountains with their three children. They decided to stop and have lunch along the way when their three-year-old son, Caden, started talking to someone or something that wasn't there. And when he relays the story to his parents, while they're sitting in the car having lunch, a cold chill goes down everybody's spines. Caden says, there's a lady over there in the meadow in a black shirt. She needs our help, but she's dead. And she's laying face down with her legs up. And she can't talk to me, but she's over there. We need to go help her. Both parents searched the meadow, but saw nothing. However, Caden was still insistent about this claim and tells his mom over and over again, trust me, trust me, mom, please trust me, mom. To which Victoria recalls saying, I trust you. You know, I believe you. 100%. The family was so spooked by this experience, they decided to call it a day and head back home. However, hours later, they're unable to shake this experience off and take to Facebook to share their story, hoping it might jostle somebody's memory of a woman in a black shirt. Before long, the couple receives a phone call from the Madura County Sheriff's Office. Corporal Chris Williams had spotted this post while scrolling through Facebook one day. He read Caden's story, and the description of the woman that he saw stopped Chris in his tracks. As he'd been working on a missing persons case for more than a year that had very few leads to it. Sandra, who disappeared less than five miles from where the Garbos stopped to have lunch. However, the part that really gave Chris chills was Caden was able to describe Sandra down to the very last detail and pull her picture out of a lineup. Now, Chris, Jake, and Caden did return to the scene for a second search, but the search once again came up dry. So interesting. That is all the information currently on Sandra Johnson Hughes as it is still an ongoing investigation and is fairly new. I don't think I've ever covered anything this close to current events, but the story really got to me and I saw it on TikTok. I'm like, "Woo, hold up. What's going on?" Uh, I remember, yeah, no, I I remember seeing this case like probably forever ago or at least like people posting like, "Hey, this person's missing." Interesting. It's very interesting. Um, do you are do you ever look into like the missing 411 stories or anything like that? I actually have a couple from the missing 411 that I covered on um, haunting nice. cases, which we will be going back to because it was one of the best episodes that I think I've ever done. But we will definitely be going back over to that. I've got a couple on the Appalachian Trail, and I'm so sorry if I mispronounced that. I don't know if it's Appalachian, Appalachian. That's semantic. So <laughs> that's what it is. It's just kind of. What's your it's just whatever I feel for the day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Appalachian. 
But yeah, no, I definitely have a couple from the missing 411, and it's kind of weird to look into the National Parks cases because there's so much that goes on. And I don't know, I don't feel like it's downplayed, but at the same time, I feel like it's just something that we don't talk about as much because it's recreational centers. But even going through, like, Tennessee and the Smoky Mountains, I mean, I was driving through some of that, and there are people that it's like, they tell you don't go off the trails and people are going off the trails. And I'm like, how many people have just walked out there and vanished because they weren't experienced enough to handle this? Yeah, if you don't know what you're doing, you can get lost so quickly in the woods. You can get turned around and just, I've spent so much time, honestly, just out messing around that I've kind of just gotten used to, oh, where's my car? And then like, you just kind of have to find an area and be like, oh, well, there's town. So I can get back to town if I need to, but then, oh, yeah. yeah. You just, you, you have and to it's even not even just the woods either, because like I used to do hikes out into the desert God. and there were times that <laughs> you get so turned around that you're like, oh my God, where's my car? And then you end up back somewhere that you didn't want to be like, mm -hmm. for instance, over here where I'm currently stationed at the lake is always like the epicenter of like you get turned around and you somehow get back to the lake and all I can think about is that meme that's like I'm back in the fucking building again <laughs> oh. so like what ends up being like supposedly a four hour hike turns into an eight hour one and then you like hope to god that your phone's not dying because it's so hot out <laughs> god don't go hiking with me. It's a bad idea. <laughs> you know, me too. I tend to bring people with me and then I'll like stick to like a normal trail that I've been on like a hundred times uh, nowadays. Um, oh, so speaking of the fires. Okay. So I have a, a little anecdote. So about two years ago, um, I went hiking up near Netherlands, Colorado, and um, I ended up seeing a mountain lion. And it growled at me and I, oh. yeah, I like, I had a backpack on, so I put it oh. up where my head was and I just kind of backed away for about half a mile and then when I was pretty sure it wasn't around I just like sprinted back to my car like I didn't stop running for like two miles but so what's going on up there even now is you're seeing like a surplus of sightings of animals are closer to people and closer to town mm -hmm. because of the fires that happened back in 2020 in Colorado and I know that well the fires in the quarantine because yeah. people just weren't out yeah and then I know up in the Sierra Mountains, there are fires going on, too. And, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, when I think of bad stuff happening and, yeah, I, I always wonder if I could be, like, just running into something that, uh, I don't know. Absolutely. Couldn't be too great. Because it's like, you go out there and you're, if, even if you are experienced, there are animals out there that can take you down in a heartbeat. Oh, two seconds. I mean, you have a cat. Oh, I have seconds. a cat. You see what the little ones can do. <laughs> Yeah, considering there was a huge gash on my leg right now yeah. from mine falling out of the window God. and using me as her crash pad. They don't, a cat's a cat. They don't, they don't care how big they are. They're just going to do cat stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, the big cat's like, oh, yeah, pretty kitty, but stay away from me. That is danger, Mal. No, 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 no. Don't pet the mountain lions. <laughs> <laughs> don't pet the mountain lions. In fact, back away from them as slowly as you can, I guess. I don't know if what you're supposed to do with the mountain lion. I actually... I probably do, but my brain's like blanking right now. I know that you're supposed to like keep eye contact with them. Yeah, I make yourself and you look don't big. Turn your back on yeah. Them. Oh, yeah. Make yourself look big, make lots of noise, make yourself intimidating as possible. I mean, I normally and hike usually with a they'll stick. back off once you're out of their territory. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the hiking stick. Oh, yeah. a stick. <laughs> the big stick. That's mostly the for snakes. baseball bat. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you like hit it to the ground to keep the snakes away so they know you're coming. That and you sound like a bigger mm -hmm. creature than you are. So it's like they won't want to get stepped on by like a deer. So if you sound like a deer, they'll move out of your way. But anyway, Sandra Johnson Hughes was last seen in summer of 2020 during the height of the pandemic. Federal officials say that Sandra was about 54 years old, five foot, three inches tall, 150 pounds with brown eyes and brown hair at the time of her disappearance. However, there is discussion that her hair may have been dyed blue during this time or may have had a faint tinting of blue to it, like it was fading. 
She was seen on Saturday, July 4th, near the Chiquito Pass trailhead. She was last seen wearing overalls with a floral shirt. Now, if anyone's seen Sandra Johnson Hughes, you are asked to contact the Madura County Sheriff's Office immediately. And they did note in one of the articles that this would be a proper use of the 911 system. Ashley does ask that if you see her, please do whatever you can to stay with her, talk to her, contact law enforcement, and let her know that her family and niece are very, very worried about her. So with that, if you or anyone you know has any information about Sandra Johnson Hughes, you are asked to contact the Madera County Sheriff's Office at 559-675-7770. That number again is 559-675-7770. Thank you again for listening to Spattered. Please make sure to follow the show on Facebook and Instagram at Spattered Podcast or on Twitter at Spattered Pod. Be sure to follow and rate the show on Spotify, Apple Podcast, Amazon Music, or wherever you get your podcasts from. If you're watching on YouTube, please make sure to hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that follow button. As always, if you have a story request, any questions, or are interested in sponsoring the show, please email me at spatteredpodcast at gmail.com. Spattered is a true crime podcast hosted by Caitlin Gardner. The research for this episode and its edits were done by Caitlin Gardner. All the music for this show comes from Lucio Cardenas, James Hansen, and Caitlin Gardner. A special thanks to our guest co-host this week, Sarah Ray. We'll see you next time. Stay safe out there.